Okay, lesson 2.3, and here we're going to deal with the parts of the uh, of the module, how to divide it up into construction elements. So the first thing to do is to set up some kind of uh, modular grid, so we understand uh, that everything is uh, designed in such a way that it can fit together. Um, so here I've decided uh, decided to divide it up into uh, 600 modules, <coughs> and. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, generally everything within the construction industry works on a, on a 300 multiple. So if we do it in 600s, the likelihood is we can get products that will fit together as simply as possible and minimize the amount of cutting that's required. i um, just going to make a construction plan out of that. <coughs> so I'll call that construction plan. there we can see the parts visibility so I'm just going to change that to show parts rather than show original. Show original shows the overall elements, walls, floors etc. Show parts shows the divisions, the layers that we're going to divide it into that we can individually edit. So we're going to use this uh, wall construction just to have an example uh, by Rockwall and uh, I'm going to use many of these elements. So very quickly I'm going to set this wall up. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we've done this before many times. make it as close as possible to the, uh, the Rockwell product diagram. Give that a color. And give it a thickness. So there we go. Now I'm just going to click on this and change the type to uh, change it to that new type of wall. And there it is. Now I need to update the uh, position of the windows so that they abide by the rules of this modular grid again to make everything constructionally simple, minimize the amount of cutting and uh, increase the efficiency, main principle of lean construction. If I was to start this from the beginning I would also modify the floor plan to fit within this module and the position of the main structure would also fit within this module. So we're left with those discrepancies in this project. So just align this one. Now you can either use a grid or reference planes to set up uh, these uh, 600 modules. I'm using a grid here because it's very visible for the demonstration, but it could also just be a reference plane. The important thing is that it's nameable and identifiable. So now I'm going to create parts. Click on the Create Parts button up there to select all these walls first. Then uh, open Create Parts. So now the parts have been created. If I roll the cursor over them, you can see they're individually selectable. Now, to set up the elevation, I need to consider how the panels of the external cladding are going to be uh, defined. And the easy way to do this is to set up reference planes. And that means we can use those levels throughout the entire scheme. And uh, we don't need to worry about things complying with each other in terms of levels. So I'm going to set up reference planes according to an 800 module. And the reason for that is, is that the floor to floor height is 3.2 meters and uh, 800 divides into 3.2 four times. So we can uh, design a module that will create a, uh, a simple pattern in the facade. So there's the reference planes. And we've also got the uh, the levels as well to deal with our divisions. So, I'm going to select cladding, divide the parts, no, I need to give it a number first, that's the reason. So each one of these reference planes has a number, so we can select it in the uh, in the dialog. So now we can go up to divide parts, 
and we can divide it by levels, we can divide it by grids, we can divide it by reference planes. So first thing we're going to divide it by floor level, and the reference plane, one, two, and three that we've just set up, and apply, and you can see the division is visible straight away. So I'll just accept that, and you can see that the uh, the part, the cladding part, has been divided into these uh, 800 elements. So I want to go a little bit further with this and divide it up according to uh, according to grid line. So simplest way to do it would be to choose uh, one whole. So I'll go from grid line 2.2, 2.4, and 2.6, and I'll use those to divide up the uh, the facade vertically. So divide it up. Use the grid lines. And we go down and find 2.2, 2.4, and 2.6. Press OK. Accept. And you can see that actually the other ones haven't been updated. It's only the top that's been updated, so I need to select all of them together. So let's just do this one quickly and then I'll do the except that the bottom two like that. Should have just selected them all at once would have made my life a little bit simpler. So now we can see that um, if I go into the uh, construction view that the facade has been or certainly the cladding has been divided into parts. <laughs> So now I can choose the parts that I want to show or that I want to hide. So I'm just going to uh, choose this. The edges, because in my construction idea, I need the cladding to be uh, removed when the box arrives from the factory to allow for fixing between the boxes. So I'm just going to select all those and uh, remove them from the selection set. So we get something like that. So now we have the uh, reference planes are still there, and uh, because of the way the rockwell construction is set up, I want to divide the uh, rockwell insulation based on the same reference planes, so that they they can allow for uh, a supporting angle to come through the insulation layer and to hold up the cladding. So you can see the benefit of using reference planes is we don't need to draw it and draw it and draw it. We can just use the same planes each time. One, two, three, apply. Okay. And accept it. And now the rock wool layer has also been divided as per its cutting list. Oh, I forgot to uh, add the floor level in there, so I need to add one more plane. I'm going to use the ground level to cut the, uh, the final element down there. Let's just select it. Divide it, select the reference planes, and there is floor layout. And accept that. And so that's pretty reasonable for a uh, rock wall cut. So you can continue to do this through the layers uh, and after, you know, a little while. 45 minutes for an hour, you should be able to uh, have the entire module pretty much divided correctly. And it can help you by exploding the construction, by taking it, selecting uh, uh, displacement, and uh, moving the elements out. This does not move the elements within the model itself, only within this view, so that we can, uh, we can uh, very simply see how the construction is made. I think I'm just going to remove these from the set because we need to have those gaps in there for the assembly. And I'm going to merge these ones together. Just to show you what's possible. So, 
create a displacement set, select the elements I want to move, holding down control, select displacement, and move it out. So there we go. So once you've done that a few times, uh, you end up with a view that's something like this, uh, with the guidelines shown. Now, if we want to tag the elements, we need to load a, uh, a material tag. So I'm just going into Insert Autodesk Seek, and I'm typing in Material Tag. So now we're searching on the internet for a material tag. There it is. Click on it. And I can download it to uh, select the one I want to download. Uh, yeah, that one's fine. And there it is. Now I'm going to load it into the project. I'm going to go back to 3D view. And now if I select uh, annotate and material tag, you can see that I can tag the individual parts that have been exploded from the uh, from the model. I'm just going to make a new sheet and insert this uh, 3D view into the sheets. Let's drag it across. There we go. I'm just going to move that little uh, title. sometimes the text disappears when you do this. All you need to do is just click on it effectively um, and that will bring it back. So now we've done all this work, we've divided the elements as we want them to uh, into their, uh, how they will be cut. So now we can make a, uh, a takeoff which is both a, a cutting list uh, and also a, uh, can be used to calculate the cost. So I'm just adding the usual suspects to this schedule. That's what I want to show. Under a parts schedule. This only works under a parts schedule. So now I get this and I can play with my sorting in the usual way. And uh, sort of by material first. Uh, give it a count and uh, I think I'm just going to give it total and hide that field. And we've got thickness in there, we've got length, we've got height, we've got area. So we've got all the information that's necessary to take a uh, material or a calculate the, uh, the cost of the materials. Uh, which you can do just using schedules or you can take it out to Sigma and do it that way. So just ordering it properly. And once we've done that, we can transfer this schedule. Oh, wait a second, I'm just going to rename it. <coughs> I'm going to call it uh, Material Takeoff. And then drag it in. And put it over here and stretch it. So you can see that this uh, process gives you both a very descriptive uh, assembly drawing but uh, also gives you hardcore information as to the amount, uh, uh, length, width, area and so forth of material that you're using within the, within the scheme. Now I can just play with it a little bit more and I think I'll hide that because it's uh, repeated information just to make it a little bit simpler on the sheet. <coughs> 